This is a farmer with a maize seed. With a little help from the soil, water and sun, the maize plant grows to produce food for both humans and animals. Maize is one of the world's most important crop plants and also one of the most common organisms being genetically modified. A genetically modified organism, or a GMO, is any organism whose genetic code has been intentionally altered by scientists, for example by the introduction of DNA from other organisms. GMOs can't be identified by how they look, but for the purposes of this movie, we'll paint them pink. One problem with genetic modification is that the modified code can spread and contaminate conventional and organic crops. Controlling GM contamination is important because it takes away people's ability to make decisions about what they want to grow and eat. This contamination can happen in the field by sowing GM seeds without knowing or through the transport of pollen by wind or insects. It can also happen through a mixture of seeds taking place in farm machinery, transport vehicles and storage and processing facilities. Unfortunately, it's often the contaminated farmers themselves who suffer the negative consequences. They pay extra for detection tests, they can lose their non-GM market, damage their good reputation, and in the case of organic farmers, even lose their organic certification. In many parts of the world, there has been resistance to GMOs. While we are familiar with the large public protests against GM crops, people working in agriculture are also developing other practical ways to resist the expansion of GM crops in their everyday lives. One strategy, often used by non-GM farmers, is delaying or advancing the period of sowing. This is to avoid having their maize flowering at the same time as GM maize and thereby limiting the potential for contamination by pollination. However, this approach has its downsides, such as lower yields, more weeds and more work. And of course, it only works if GM farmers don't do the same. Some companies are offering economic incentives to farmers to not sow GM maize, thereby creating GM-free zones. Of course, to be effective though, such zones will always depend on neighbouring farms also choosing not to sow GM maize. Extensive monitoring is also being performed throughout all stages of production to identify whether GM contamination has occurred. But unfortunately, this process is expensive and it is those who get contaminated rather than those who contaminate who have to pay the costs. Pharma cooperatives and some companies are also offering social incentives to promote GM-free farming. Social incentives are built on the strength of a community supporting each other. While this can be very important for the farmers involved, it is not enough on its own to avoid GM contamination. Non-GM farmers are also trying to gain status by claiming their produce is healthier and more sustainable. This can build consumer support, but it is also not enough on its own to stop GM contamination. Some organisations, for example those in the organic sector, have challenged the GM labelling law and voluntarily changed the contamination threshold from 0.9 to 0.1 per cent even if this makes things more difficult for them. Despite the existence of all of these strategies though, the spread of GMOs remains a serious problem that is hard to control and costly for those trying to avoid contamination. This makes coexistence between GM and non-GM crops an ongoing everyday struggle and actually, for those who do not want GM crops, just existing is resisting.